All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, like many people, the ideas behind the fourth turning of I Neil Howe have intrigued me now for a long time. There's oceans of discussion out there about how Howe's thesis pertains to politics, where the ruling regime loses legitimacy, the population reaches a crisis point in politics, and often either a civil war or world war is required to end the cycle. What people often miss in the analysis of the fourth turning are his prescient and yet equally important discussions of how each turning is reflected in pop culture and how what art is popular in each turn relates to the larger trends. I couldn't help thinking about that over the Labor Day weekend. The official numbers of the summer box office season have come out, showing a stunning reversal of more than a decade of American pop culture and Hollywood successful formulas. The two major hits of the summer blockbuster season are now officially Barbie and Oppenheimer, beating out traditional franchise hits like the latest Mission Impossible and the latest installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. But what is really stunning is to consider Barbie Barbie and Oppenheimer in broader context. Barbie has now crossed the coveted $1 billion worldwide box office threshold, and Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer is now one of the highest grossing R-rated films of all time. Consider Barbie, for example, against Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which is the end of a particular franchise and one of the only good Marvel movies to actually come out in years. It grossed only $800 million globally at the box office. That's not to even mention the pathetic performance so far of DC Comics movies like Flash and Blue Beetle, which are are a decade too late to the craze and hopefully will die or at least be reborn in a more dignified fashion. The sudden reversal with films like Barbie, Oppenheimer, and Sound of Freedom crushing major franchise films at the box office is a massive demarcation point in American culture, and it returns us possibly to the best of Hollywood. Great scripts, great casts, original screenplays, big dollars at the box office. The real test comes in the next year or so. Which era are we gonna live in? We get to choose. Consider some of the other films that are coming out in the next year or so. Ridley Scott with Joaquin Phoenix for what is sure to be a stunning Napoleon biopic. Or the character actor Adam Driver starring alongside Penelope Cruz in Ferrari. Or Leo and Scorsese coming to us once again with Killers of the Flower Moon. Or one, which is already one of the best nonfiction books to come out in the last decade. And don't get me wrong, there are plenty of franchise films that will still come out. Saw 10, which we needed, of course. <laughs> a new Hunger Games movie, a new Wonka movie, an Aquaman 2, The Marvels, which looks like one of the worst movies ever, and only one that I'm actually excited for, Dune 2. If only the best, though, of those survive and great original screenplays with stars and great directors do thrive alongside them, it will be a sound message to Hollywood. No more recycled crap. We demand originality. More so, it is important to connect our pop culture, again, to the fourth turning, in the context of geopolitics. The economics of Marvel movies didn't make as much sense just for American box offices. It was because they occurred at the height of Obama-era globalization and the coddling of China. Marvel movies found incredible success in emerging box offices, and that led to the watering down of scripts that were relevant across all cultures, as opposed to references that people could truly understand at home. In the era, though, of great power competition, the Chinese box office dream is basically dead. Even Mar Marvel movies that were targeted to China, like Shang-Chi and The Rings, were banned for political purposes, and Hollywood has found itself increasing demands for censorship, which even they can't bow to. This, of course, forces their hand. If they can't have access to that market, they gotta change their approach. And that change would work far better if you actually like good movies. The great stagnation that we saw in our economy since 2008 has, of course, affected us all in much, much more important ways, like access to housing, jobs, inflation, wages, wealth inequality. But the way in which we both entertain ourselves and that we demand of our entertainment says also a lot about us. The stagnation of Hollywood led to an explosion of streaming content for niche individual audiences. This was downstream of the internet, which of course also coincided and pushed along politics of division. Now I am the firm belief a national identity is a result of a major economic and good conditions and uniting beliefs. Hollywood at its best, in its golden age, it served as a vehicle for everyone to find a piece of themselves in the silver screen and to experience collective moments together. And perhaps one good result of all of the chaos of the last 15 years is the birth of a new era, reclaiming that legacy, which could lead to better times far ahead. So interesting, Crystal, I'm curious. Hey guys, obviously I had a lot of thoughts on what Sagar had to say there. So if you wanna see my thoughts on this monologue and every other Sagar monologue, make sure you subscribe at breakingpoints.com.